Okay, uh, this is a demonstration of uh, how the charging circuit works, or if it works. Okay, so uh, here's the <clears throat> basic Ainsley circuit, and what I've done is I've uh, broken it here so that we can take the diode and switch it off the load and out into an external capacitor or battery. And I also, as you know, can test uh, two diodes there. Okay, so this will be the, <clears throat> the switch that switches the diode off the load and onto the external uh, capacitor. Okay, so here's the external capacitor right here. Okay, that's the same one that I used in the demonstration of Godelux circuit. This is a bleeder resistor that I will touch on there to drop the charge off the capacitor. This is the voltage on the capacitor right now. And I'll just take that off there like that, okay? So, zero volts, and uh, we're using the cat food one load with the light bulb in parallel. We're running on the 2SK, or rather the IRFPG50 MOSFET. And uh, <clears throat> so what I'm going to do now is uh, switch the diode. Let's see. Okay, so here we're going to, uh, I have no diode selected, I'm going to select the 4007, like that, okay, and now <clears throat> the diode is actually in the circuit, in the normal position, it's across the load, so now I'm going to switch it uh, to the capacitor, going. and you see there that the voltage it comes right up to battery voltage and then it continues to climb, right? and also this trace on the oscilloscope goes up and you can see it creeping slowly up as the battery voltage climbs okay the battery voltage is about uh, 24.9 so we're climbing above the battery voltage there. Okay, now I'm going to switch uh, to the, this is on the 1N4007 diode, now I'm going to switch to the faster diode, the MUR1100E. There you go, and you can see with the faster diode it chops uh, the, the uh, backward spikes a little bit better, so more of the voltage, more of the, uh, more of the power coming out of that diode, voltage and current, is going into the capacitor. So now we're slowly climbing. Okay, so uh, with the faster diode, the MUR1100E, instead of the 1N4007, we get a little bit more voltage. Uh, now we're about 5 volts above the battery voltage. And this would certainly be enough to transfer charge into another battery uh, or back to the main battery. Uh, the, the, the only difficulty with this is, of course, that this is coming from the main battery in the first place. So uh, there's no free energy. There's energy circulating around, but it's energy that's coming from the battery in the first place. Okay, now this is running with the uh, IRF. PG50 MOSFET, which produces uh, a slow uh, turn on and turn off time, uh, and the familiar spikes that uh, uh, that you know about. Those spikies there, right? This is the input current trace there. Okay. So now if I go to the 2SK1548. Notice the voltage here, it's 30.2. If I go to the 2SK1548, look at that 
I get a squarer pulse here, which means I get better spikes on the ring down. And notice the voltage climbing up here. 39 volts and still climbing. Okay, 40 volts. All right. So uh, the, the faster your MOSFET is in this situation, the more voltage you're going to get uh, because you have bigger spikes. Okay. So if uh, if voltage off the end of that diode is what you want, or voltage recirculating, or voltage to charge an external capacitor, the IRF PG50 MOSFET is not your best choice. A faster MOSFET like the 2SK1548 is better. We're at 43.6 volts now, and uh, we're still 43.7, and we're still climbing. So let me repeat that test for you. First I'll take the diode out of the circuit, like that. Then I'll discharge the voltage on the capacitor, like that. Okay. I hope you can see that voltmeter all right. It says zero volts or zero. Now we're discharged. We'll go to the 2SK, or rather the IRF PG50 MOSFET. We got the gate resistance turned all the way to zero. Um, we're getting the pulses from the beta pulse uh, DP100 or DP101 here, and it's a 4.5% on duty cycle. Alright, so there's the voltmeter. Now I'm going to switch to the 1N4007 diode. And you see that it comes up to battery voltage very quickly uh, because you just switched in the battery. And now it's climbing above battery voltage from the spikes that are generated. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so the battery voltage is about 24.8 or 24.9. Uh, we're up to one volt over that with the 1N4007. Now we'll switch to the faster recirculating diode, the MUR1100E, like that. And you see we get more voltage, it's climbing Okay, now we're stabilized at a little over 30 volts. Now what I'm going to do is switch to the other MOSFET. Uh, we're, we're going to the 2SK1548. You notice the light dimmed a little bit? Well, that's because more of the power is in the spikes and more of it's going to whatever you have your external battery or diode or, or, or I'm sorry, battery or capacitor coming off the end of that diode. So 41 volts, 42 volts. So more power is being, with the 2SK1548, more power is in the spikes, more power is diverted from the actual load to the recirculation or to the external battery or capacitor uh, if you have more spikes and more power in the ring down. Look at that, 43 volts and still climbing. So by using a faster recirculation diode, something like the MUR1100E, uh, and a faster, cleaner switching MOSFET uh, with higher gain, like the 2SK1548, uh, um, the Ainsley circuit works better for whatever. It heats better, and it produces more of this. Uh, does it produce free energy in either MOSFET? No, it just recirculates the same old energy from the battery. 44.1, we're at almost twice the battery voltage now.